In this video, we're going to take another look at the color capabilities of the Wacom Cintiq Pro product line. We'd previously done a calibration video focusing on the Cintiq Pro 27. We want to take that a step further and talk about color matching across multiple displays on multiple platforms. So I've got a Cintiq Pro 22, my Cintiq Pro 27, and a Wacom Move Ink underneath, which is also calibratable and color accurate. And then I have a non-Wacom, non-color accurate secondary display on the right. So we'll take a look at the ITU color bars across all four displays just to see the differences once calibrated. Um, the whole point is to show that the, the Cintiq Pros can be calibrated and are reliable across the board uh, in any platform, whatever your output is and whatever profiling you're set into. So again, I've calibrated everything on Windows to Rec. 709 uh, and then I've switched input source on my 22 uh, just to go from Windows to Mac and I've got Premiere open on both of the same footage just to show uh, that we're experiencing the same things. Uh, I've got Lumetri scopes open. Uh, and then a couple other things that we're going to talk about is like enabling 10-bit color uh, with the NVIDIA control panel on Windows and just ensuring that you've got 10-bit color out with the different cabling you have set up to the Cinti Pros. So it should be a fun video. Let's jump right into it. Here's my array of displays here. Uh, I have the Cinti color bar set up as my desktop background so that I can quickly at a glance just see how these displays look next to each other uh, before and after calibration. Let's take a look at the built-in display settings on the current setup. On the Cintiq Pro 22, it shows display port connection, 4K resolution at 3840 by 2160 at 120 Hz, currently displaying at 8-bit color. Opening display settings on the Cintiq Pro 27, we see similar specs, this time connected with USB-C, uh, 4K resolution, 120 Hz, and displaying 8-bit color as well. In order to get both of these Cintiqs displaying 10-bit color, we have to open up the NVIDIA control panel. So we'll open up the NVIDIA control panel, of course this is the home page. To make the change from 8-bit to 10-bit color depth, we're going to go under Display and select Change Resolution. Here we have the two Cintiq Pros and the third-party monitor listed. Both Cintiqs are listed as being connected with DisplayPort. Of course, one is USB-C, which carries DisplayPort alt mode signal, and then the third-party monitor is connected with HDMI. One thing to note here is that the change from 8-bit to 10-bit color will need to be applied to each display. Next, once I have the Wacom Cintiq Pro selected, down here under apply the following settings, we'll switch from use default color settings over to use NVIDIA color settings. Use NVIDIA color settings. And that gives us access to the output color depth drop down menu. Click on this, we can see options for 8-bit color and 10-bit color. We'll select the 10-bit color and click apply. Now we can check the display settings menu to verify the adjustment to 10-bit color. So that's fantastic. Now if I open up the display panel on the Cintiq Pro 22, this one is still outputting at 8-bit. Now we can select the second Cintiq to apply the same change. Now we open up the display settings menu to see that this is now displaying at 8-bit color, which is perfect. Next thing to make sure, of course, is that all the displays are set to the same color profile. So I'll open up the display panel again, navigate down to display settings, click enter, Color mode is set to Rec. 709. This is the color space that I generally work in. Uh, I've already set all three of these Cintiqs to Rec. 709 with the same color contrast and brightness values, so 50 and 50. If I open up display settings on the Move Ink, uh, we have Rec. 709 at 50 brightness and 50 contrast. And again on the Cintiq Pro 22, we'll go to display settings and see Rec. 709 at 50 and 50. Now to take one step further, we're going to use the Wacom Color Manager to calibrate all these displays. And because my office is quite bright, I like to keep the brightness up uh, for my displays, so I generally target 160 nits. So that's what we're going to do next. So we'll open up the Wacom Color Manager application and select Display Profiling. We're not going to go too far into it just because it's been covered in a previous video. So if you haven't watched the, that one, uh, please go check out our color calibration video for the Wacom Cintiq Pro. Next up, we'll calibrate the third-party display. This is not a color accurate display by any means and not a Wacom product, so the color profiling will be handled differently. Instead of RGB primaries, there's a drop-down menu for white point. Uh, there are a few options here for brightness and different temperature of the light. We're going to leave this at a D65 luminance, since that is the white point for Rec. 709. 
and we'll keep this at 160 candela per meter squared. And for tone response curve, we'll just leave that as standard for now. We'll go for next and start measurement. Here it's instructing us to set the contrast of the display to maximum setting. Underneath here, I'll use the display's physical buttons to adjust those settings. Uh, under picture mode, I'll select custom. Contrast is at 99, so I'll bump that up to 100. Now the Wacom Color Manager software will walk us through manual adjustments of the brightness and contrast values to near the target values before running our brief measurement with the colorimeter. These results should provide a more drastic before and after. So this is a before and after, before, after. We've got a gamut coverage of 59.5%, obviously not a great score there. Our target luminance is pretty close at 150 candela per meter squared. With all the displays calibrated, now we can pull out and have a look at all four displays next to each other. The next step in the process is to ensure the software package and files you're working with are set to the appropriate color spaces. So I switched the import source of the Cintiq Pro 22 over to view my Mac Mini. Now we have Premiere Pro open up on both Mac and Windows with the same HDR footage set to the exact frame. Before we make any changes to the software side of things, we have to jump into the Mac system settings window. We'll open up system settings and under displays, we'll see a color profile drop down here. So we'll click on Cintiq Pro 22, I'm going to scroll down to find Rec ITU-RBT709-5. Now we have our Mac displaying in Rec 709 on the Rec 709 calibrated Cintiq Pro 22. We'll jump back into Premiere Pro. So the footage will look a little bit different, or at least it appears to be a little different based on the settings of color space on the Mac Mini. Now we have to ensure that the software itself is displaying this footage in the right color space. So under Sequence, Sequence Settings, the Color Management tab, and here under Output Color Space, we have Rec 2100 HLG. I'm going to click on that and select Rec 709. Once we hit OK, you'll see that the color of that footage will really pop and look fantastic. So that's the main thing that we can do on the Premiere Pro side. So we'll make that same change on Windows on the Cintiq Pro 27. We've got the same footage with the same sun glare and everything happening at the same time. We've got the same lumetri scopes. We have a look at the Lumetri scopes we just shifted here. So you make the same change on the window side. I'll make sure that I have the sequence selected. We'll go up to sequence, sequence settings, same thing. Hit the color management tab and we'll switch from Rec 2100 HLG to Rec 709. And now we have the same footage displaying consistently across both displays on both Mac and Windows. So now we have Photoshop open on both Mac and Windows. Here we're going to assign the color space to Photoshop and assign a color profile to the image itself. Under Edit, we'll click on Color Settings. Under the Workspaces tab, we have RGB, and that's set to the default sRGB IEC6. So when I scroll down this list to find Rec. 709, we see Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4, and that's our target. We'll click OK. And that'll display a little bit differently with some more contrast. And now we're displaying Photoshop in Rec. 709, matching our Cinti Pro 27 color profile of Rec. 709 as well. Now to assign the color profile to the file itself, we'll go again under Edit, Assign Profile. This is just a warning that the change may affect the layers of the file. So yes. By default, we're on Don't Color Manage This Image. Working RGB will reflect the setting we just enabled with Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 or you can click on profile and select that same color profile from the list. So we'll go down to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4. And that will be displaying in Rec. 709 on a Rec. 709 calibrated display. Now we'll jump over to the Mac and do the same thing there. What's a little bit different here is that because we made the switch on the hardware side already, we probably won't have to make the actual change to the color settings, but we want to ensure that we're displaying in the same color space. So under Edit, Color Settings, under workspaces, we'll see that the selected monitor RGB 
RECITU-RBT709-5. That is indeed what we selected on the Mac side of things. But of course, you can just open up that list and select that color profile to ensure that we're in the right space again. Again, we'll assign the color profile to the file itself. So down under edit, assign, down under edit, assign profile, same reminder. And we'll go from our don't manage this document to profile. And we'll scroll down to rec 709 itu rbt 709 5 Now we've got the same file open on Photoshop on both Mac and Windows, displaying the exact same color profile on calibrated monitors, which is fantastic. Lastly, we'll have a look at the same file open up across all four displays, showing that all three Cintiq Pros and Move Ink products are displaying in the accurate color space, and we did what we could with the third-party display.